What's up, fight fans? In today's video, Khabib Nurmagomedov seems to be gearing up for battle, gathering his troops. Mike Tyson's fake punch video breaks the internet, and Netflix is in hot water, facing a $50 million class action lawsuit over streaming issues during the Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson fight. Then the Tyson fight, that was the lie. That was the lie. Alex Pereira's visit to South Korea has stirred up quite the excitement among local fans. Plus, Ian Gary's epic warning to Shavkat Rachmanov. What about Dominic Cruz when I put that freaking knee on top of his freaking dome? Stick around as we dive into all these stories and more interesting news from the fight world. The Jake Paul vs. Mike Tyson fight brought in over 108 million live viewers worldwide, making it a big win for Netflix. But for a lot of those viewers, the stream didn't work smoothly. One viewer was so frustrated that he sued Netflix in Florida on Monday. He's making it a class action lawsuit saying Netflix broke their contract and didn't give people what they promised. He claims Netflix wasn't ready for the large number of viewers and the lawsuit says the stream was basically unwatchable because of all the technical issues. Answer two questions help understand your issue, okay? I think the questions are you guys have never done a live boxing event. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. Are other people using the internet to watch videos? No. Can your other device connect to Netflix on your internet? I think, uh, yeah. See, the thing is, I can watch anything but this fight. I'm not gonna unplug the TV. I'll never get it back on. I'm not gonna wait 30 seconds. I'm not doing all that shit. Just get it back. I'm not unplugging the TV. The whole thing will fall off the wall. Many people missed big parts or even the whole fight. On top of that, Netflix ignored complaints from the half a million people having issues during the stream. The world was hoping for a blockbuster. Instead, we got a fizzer. Tyson never really stood a chance. And even as the rounds progressed, the crowds actually started booing and some in the audience walked out altogether. Netflix, the streamer which broadcast the fight, also copping a fair few blows itself this morning. Not just for the lacklustre result, but also for its service. You can see there, there were big problems with buffering and even outages too, infuriating fans right around the world. After all of this build up, guys, it is easy to think what was the point of it all. But then you consider the millions in advertising revenue and the huge pay packets for the competitors, tens of millions of dollars each, and it all starts to make a bit more sense. Netflix isn't the only one in trouble after the Paul versus Tyson fight. The people who did manage to watch were upset for another reason. The fight didn't live up to the hype. The fighters promised excitement, but instead of knockouts or an intense battle, the fight dragged on for eight rounds. Some people believe that footage shows Mike Tyson had a chance for a big punch, but held back because he wasn't allowed to knock out Jake. If Tyson had thrown that punch, it would have broken the contract, at which supposedly said, no knockouts were allowed. See, Mike Tyson could have knocked him out there. Jake Paul's chin was wide open, but then Mike Tyson realized, just as he was about to throw that punch, that, oh no, I'm getting paid lots of money, I can't knock him out. <laughs> so ridiculous, man. People seeing that Mike Tyson could have knocked him out, see, it was a scam, it was a scripted. But if you know boxing, you'll know exactly what's happened right here. Mike started to throw the punch as Jake Paul was moving and he realized that split second that if I throw this punch, it's going to miss because he's moving out of the way. So what did he do? Decided not to throw the punch. It's as simple as that, my friend. Has set himself up to be another one of the 42 people that have been knocked out with that overhand right. He has his head out, his jab arm down, and he's wide open, and Tyson goes to throw it and short arms it. Watch. Um, Jake Paul even anticipates the hit. Now, uh, it, now, does he miss that, Bubba, at 58? Does no, no. If you miss it, you hit the guy. You, yeah, just, don't exactly. have, you just don't. Yes. Michael Irvin also called the fight a lie. Then the Tyson fight. That was the lie. That was the lie. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot. You said a lot, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Made it a lie. Hey, Mike, you know, Mike. You see him hip hop, hit Jake with that uppercut that he's so known for? I wanted to see that uppercut. What we see on them Instagram posts, 
when he be hitting up that boop, 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 he hit the bag. He, 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 hurt, he hurt me when he hit that bag. I wanted Jake Paul to get some of that. That's why I said it was a lie. Jake Paul recently responded to those claiming the Mike Tyson fight was rigged. He wrote, people are like, oh yeah, it's rigged because look at him on the pads, but he didn't do this in the fight because someone is ficking punching back, you dumb fucks. People don't realize my power and my jab and my speed and my ability and my footwork to get out of the way of those punches. So then all of a sudden he's throwing at literally air. He can't land those punches on me. If you remember, Jake received a ton of hate from former and current boxers, experts, and fans for organizing the fight with Tyson. But right after the fight, the world went crazy, and Paul suddenly became perhaps the most sought-after figure in the industry. Everyone wants to fight him. What can we say if even the usually silent Artur Baterbiev, who never comments on scheduled fights, decided to challenge the blogger to a fight? The logic is simple. If, earlier, Paul was seen by professional boxers as just a person who holds exhibition fights, now Jake is viewed as a relatively easy fight for big money. So why not put the pursuit of titles on hold for such an opportunity? And at the same time, punish him, as many believe, for insulting the sport of boxing. It may not benefit the sport itself, but everyone wants a big payday, and Jake Paul is the biggest check in the game today. In addition to Better BF, the desire to fight the blogger was also Kevin Lorena, and even lightweight Ryan Garcia. It is worth noting the scale of the hype around Paul, considering that people from various weight classes are calling him out. I wasn't at all surprised by the result. I think Mike Tyson is a winner either way. Jake's asked for a fight with you. If Jake wants it with me, he can get it too, but I'm the world champion. Yeah, yeah. Give, him a, give him a shot like that, you know? So you'll just knock him out in the yeah. first round the first, within the first minute. Of course, yeah. but it would be a historical moment, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Never before. The, probably, the contract will state you can't knock him out. <laughs> but that's what they do. Because obviously the fight, everyone knows last Saturday the fight was fixed. But I wouldn't take no one lightly, you know? If, if a man got a chance to become more champion, he was going to yeah. go. If he's smart, he'll, he'll really go to town, go to work and try to be the best version of himself. So. I've done more in four years than you have in your life. What's he done in four years in his boxing career? Absolutely fucking nothing. Do I need to go into my professional career? Do I need to go into my Hall of Fame career? 12 world title fights, back to back. Back to back world title fights from beating Jean Pascal to defend against Jermaine Taylor, right through to ironing George Grove that at Wembley Stadium in front of 80,000 fans. You're a content creator, you're a YouTuber. Jake Paul is not a fighter, he's not a boxer. He's playing at the game, he's pretending just for the record. I've got no intentions of ever lacing up the gloves again. I don't want to fight again. I'm not interested. Last thing I want to be doing is lacing up the gloves and getting this nice straight hooter punched again. I just do think that if the fight happened with Jake Paul, it wouldn't be a fight for me. I could beat him with one arm, literally. It'd be so easy. But I've got no intentions. This isn't a call out. I'm not interested in fighting him. I did say previously to all the haters that say, oh, Frotty's looking for a payday, that I'll do this fight for charity just to shut him up. For now, Jake will take a rest and then his team will announce his next fight. Fans and experts will likely spit criticize and call Paul the disgrace of boxing again. But he will step into the ring, make a huge amount of money, and once again receive a slew of challenges from world stars of the sport. I feel like I can beat Jake Paul in a fight. Tyson Max, yes. Like when I watch him box, it's like he it doesn't look fluent, you know, fluent, you know? Like I feel like I can like really beat him. And especially if I have six months, all I need is six months. If I have six months of training, I'm being any boxer in this world. I think I'm knocking him out. Like the fifth, sixth round, big sweets. I'm getting him. It's gonna just be that one good one. You know, like the one that Javante Davis did on Ryan? He's done, he's sweet. Khabib Nurmagomedov seems to be preparing for war and gathering his troops. Khabib recently shared a post on Instagram featuring a scene from the film Gladiator, where gladiators rally before battle. This post humorously suggests that Khabib is gathering troops in anticipation of the upcoming fight between his cousin Usman Nurmagomedov and Irish fighter Paul Hughes. The bout is scheduled for January 25th at the Bellator Road to Dubai event. It's expected that Khabib will be in Usman's corner during the fight. There has been speculation about Conor McGregor cornering Paul Hughes, given the historical rivalry between McGregor and the Nurmagomedov family. However, many fans doubt McGregor will take on this role, as he has his own challenges. Regardless of McGregor's involvement, Khabib's Instagram post indicates that he and his team are prepared and motivated for the upcoming fight. 
Despite the fact that Jan Gary and Shavkat Rachmanov have trained together several times and know each other well, Gary is confident that he will hand Rachmanov his first loss and take the belt. Honestly, I was pushing for the Shavkat fight. I was pushing for it, undefeated versus undefeated. We've trained together, we know how good we are, we both respect each other, he probably respects me a lot less than I respect him, which is okay, which is okay, that's the way it should be at that point in our careers. But the truth is, I will take his own, I will take that belt. Hey, give me that, this just shows that this c took me. He's been ducking me for f seven, eight months. I signed for the baddest man in the division, and this guy comes out of the f shadows. He's a f he's a f and one day I'll get my hands on him. Wacky and Buckley, I'm behind you 100% of the way. Go out and put that man asleep. Please and thank you. Do it for me, because he's not able to do it against me. Henry Cejudo goes off on Dominic Cruz and says he wants to fight him next. Dominic snooze. The only thing I remember about Dominic Cruz when I put that freaking knee on top of his freaking dome. That's the only thing that I remember him. And then he woke up. He was talking about, I need some alcohols and cigarettes. And starts blaming the referee when he had 13 unanswered shots. I actually like that fight. If the UFC wants to make it, let's make it happen. But as I told you before, as I told Bumtista and everybody else, I don't want to get in a fight with Hunter no more. I'm allowing Hunter to really pick the fight. If he wants to give Dominic Cruz that fight, then let's do it. As you know, in the fifth round of the rematch between Michael Chandler and Charles Oliveira at UFC 309, Chandler delivered a series of strikes to Oliveira that some observers believed were illegal blows to the back of the head. Chandler, however, stated that these punches were aimed at Oliveira's ear, asserting their legality. He explained, I thought it was done. Oh. Yeah, that's uh, and, and and the referee was right there, dude. Because I mean, he took like fifteen shots to the ear, like fifteen. And, and I was like, "Is he gonna? Is this for you gonna freaking you know step in, dude?" Wait, you know, what? What do you think? Are you We got to talk about the tweet that Moicano posted about wow. Michael Chandler so versus Charles he's official. Oliveira. Michael is never coming to the party <laughs> after that tweet. Brother, but tell me something that I did wrong. No. I just, people are. So I'm going to read this word for word. Moicano said. No, but read with the Brazilian accent, please. Let me tell you something, my brother. It's, it's impressive. <laughs> that's, how many not a, that's not accent, my brother. This is expression. Impressive right? how many fouls Michael Chandler committed yesterday in the fight against Charles. I poke, strike to the back of the head, grab in the cage. If he repeats that in his next fight, he needs to be penalized severely. Can I give you guys a tip how I do that so well constructed? Can I you, did with Chad GBT. Well, you look too is it is a for well you, put bro. together post. It's I more for you. Portuguese, you know, <laughs> and I say, hey, create something yeah. nice. Talk shit about <laughs> Michael Chandler. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm more interested in a rematch with Oliveira. Okay. You know. Yeah. And um, or Poirier, but I prefer uh, something new. I think uh, me and Poirier would be a great fight. You know, if, if it is his last one. I just think that <clears throat> we're both contenders, and I don't think we're contenders if we fight each other. And so um, I'm content with the one and one. Hopefully, he is, and then I'm. You know, I think Dan Hooker, uh, I don't know if Volkanovski's coming, I know Holloway's coming back, or maybe coming back up. I would love that rematch. Um, but yeah, being number three, I mean, there's a lot of options. Yeah, I think the, I told him I want to fight in March. Uh, so March, I think it's in Vegas. Yes. I'll be there. Alex Pereira recently visited South Korea, and his arrival created quite a buzz among local MMA fans. He turned out to be extremely popular in the country, which was clear from the moment he arrived. Fans greeted Pereira at the airport and followed him to various events, showing their support and admiration. In addition to meeting fans and signing autographs, Pereira held several spectacular and intense sparring sessions at local gyms. Oh, 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 oh,
That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. We'd be very grateful.